Let's take a quick look at a demo that shows how easy it is to set up and use DynamoDB global tables. In this example, I'll use the AWS CLI to perform the following sequence. 1. Create a new table named Cloud Academy Courses in the US West 2 region. This table will contain courses provided by Cloud Academy. 2. Populate the Cloud Academy Courses table with sample course data. 3. Convert the Cloud Academy Courses table into a global table, deploying a replica table in the alternate region AP Southeast 2. 4. Confirm both tables are in an active status. 5. Add new course data into the US West 2 region hosted Cloud Academy Courses table. 6. Watch and observe the time taken to propagate data into the replicated table in the AP Southeast 2 region. OK, let's begin. I'll start by browsing to the Cloud Academy DynamoDB Global Tables GitHub repo. As you can see, the readme for this repo contains all of the instructions for this demo. We'll simply copy and paste each of these steps from this readme as we later proceed. Regardless, we will also need to git clone this repo to give us access to the data files used to populate the global table that we are soon to set up. Therefore, I'll simply copy the git clone URL and then jump into my local terminal and then perform a git clone using the URL just copied. Navigating into the new DynamoDB global tables directory, I'll use the tree command to examine and display its contents. Here, we can see the two data files, batch.course.data1.json and batch.course.data2.json which we will use to later populate our global table. OK, next I'll copy the step 1 instruction and then paste it into the terminal. Step 1 simply creates a new DynamoDB table named Cloud Academy Courses and locates it in the US West 2 region. The billing mode is set to pay per request. This is a requirement to be able to later create a global table off this table. This looks good. Our new Cloud Academy Courses table has been successfully created. We can confirm this by jumping into the AWS DynamoDB console and then selecting the tables view within the Oregon region. Here we can indeed see that the new Cloud Academy Courses table has been created and has an active status. OK, let's move on and populate this table. Before I run the step 2 command, let's take a quick look at the data set that we're going to reference and use to populate the new Cloud Academy Courses table. Using the cat command on the batch.course.data1.json file, we can see that it contains three course items that will be inserted into the table. Each item has a course ID, which acts as the primary key, followed by the attributes company, title, URL, duration, and instructor. I'll now execute the step two command, which will result in our Cloud Academy courses table being populated with these three items. OK, that looks good as per the fact that the output contains an empty unprocessed items object. Jumping back into the AWS DynamoDB console, we can now navigate into the table and select the items tab to view the current set of items. And as expected, we have three new items that we just populated it with. We are now ready to convert the Cloud Academy courses table into a global table. To do so, I'll copy the step three command and then execute it back within the terminal. This command is going to create a replica read-write multi-master table in the AP Southeast 2 Sydney region. This looks good. We can see in the output that the table status is set to updating. We'll wait a few minutes before executing the step 4 command, just to give the step 3 command enough time to propagate the table changes across to the new Sydney region. While we are waiting, we can jump back into the AWS DynamoDB console and take a look at the global tables tab. Here, we can see that there are two configured regions for our Cloud Academy courses table. The original US West 2 region, which has an active status, and the newly configured AP Southeast 2 region, Sydney, which has a creating status. OK, let's now copy the step 4 command and execute it. This simply displays the details of the newly provisioned Cloud Academy courses global table located in the Sydney AP Southeast 2 region. Again, we can see that it is still in a creating status as per the table status attribute. We need to wait for this table to achieve active status. Therefore, 
let's periodically poll this table every 30 seconds by executing the step 5 command. This command re-executes the previous command every 30 seconds and then extracts out and displays the table status, attribute value, which we can see is still in creating status. We need to pause here until this changes to active. I'll now speed up the demo to the point where the table reaches the active status, which we can now see. Okay, this is a great result and implies that our Cloud Academy course's global table is ready. Next, let's watch and observe the replication of data rights to the Cloud Academy course's global table setup. To do so, I'll now clear the current terminal and then use the tmux command to split the terminal into two panes. Within the terminal, I'm using the key sequence Control plus B together with a double quote. Excellent. To navigate between the two panes, again use the key sequence Control plus B and then the up and down arrow keys. In the top pane, I'll run the step 6, pane 1 command. This will set up a watch that continuously performs a read against the AP Southwest 2 Sydney hosted Cloud Academy courses table every second looking for a new data item that we will next insert into the US West 2 Oregon region hosted Cloud Academy courses table in the bottom pane. This will allow us to observe the speed at which the global table changes propagate between regions. Next, I'll move focus to the bottom pane into which I'll execute the step 6 pane 2 command. This command inserts new table data and for which the top pane command is querying for. Now, as you can see, the propagation time is approximately 1 to 2 seconds, which is quite impressive, considering the data is being replicated from Oregon in the States to Sydney in Australia. Let's now reverse the setup, and this time write data into the AP Southwest 2 hosted Cloud Academy courses table, and see it get replicated back into the US West 2 hosted Cloud Academy courses table, emphasizing indeed that global tables are configured as multi-master read writes. To perform this, I'll make a copy of the batch2.course.data2.json file and name it batch.course.data3.json. I'll then use Vim to edit the contents of this file and simply update each of the three items, course ID keys, with new unique values. I'll save this back to the file system. Next, I'll update the watch command to query from the US West 2 region. And then in the other TMAX pane, I'll rerun the AWS DynamoDB batch write item command, but this time have it insert into the AP Southeast 2 Sydney region. Again, we can observe that the propagation time is very quick, but more importantly, this time we have demonstrated that our Cloud Academy courses global table is truly configured in a multi-master read-write configuration. This is very cool. Finally, let's jump back into the AWS DynamoDB console and examine the Cloud Academy courses table. Refreshing the items view, we can see all of the expected items that we populated the Cloud Academy courses global table with. Note that this is the view of the items as currently held within the table located in the US West 2 region. We can equally view the items held within the table located in the AP Southeast 2 region by clicking on the Global Tables tab and then clicking on the Sydney region. This will open up a new browser tab for the current Cloud Academy courses table, albeit in the Sydney region. Then clicking on the Items tab, we can see the same replicated table items. Okay, let's summarize what we have just demonstrated. One. We created a new table named Cloud Academy Courses in the US West 2 region. 2. We then populated the Cloud Academy Courses table with sample course data. 3. We then converted the Cloud Academy Courses table into a global table, deploying a second replica table in the alternate AP Southeast 2 Sydney region. 4. We then confirmed both tables were in an active status before proceeding. 5. We then added new course data into the US West 2 table and then confirmed that it was replicated to the AP Southeast 2 table and confirmed replication was very quick. And six, we then repeated the previous step but in the reverse direction. 
that is. We added new course data into the AP Southeast 2 Sydney table and then confirmed that it was replicated back to the US West 2 Oregon table, this time confirming that global tables are indeed set up as multi-master read-writes.